So George Fortovich, uh, member of the 505, and actually they performed their first combat job in Sicily, after what, uh, in Salerno, and uh, he, he, Normandy, but he missed Market Garden. Uh, he was back in the Battle of the Bulge, but um, I met him in Florida back in 2015, and you can see, like, with my camper. And I'm with my friend, Hugo Lego Yerek, who is actually working in the movie industry. And he, um, he actually filmed all of it. So we went to his house and he never really conducted any interview. And this is thanks to one of his friends, Mr. Murphy, um, was as well in the 505. His son actually knew him and he put me in touch with him. This is so beautiful. Then he never really talked about it? No, because actually, um, I mean, I, I'm in touch with now some of the family members of George. And they were like, how did you get there to have like three hours of video interview with him? I'm like, maybe because I'm not from the family, uh, it's easier like to talk about those stuff because I'm gonna leave and I will never see him again. So oh my you see God. Like, all the letters, oh all the letters God. are the one that he sent to his wife, the cute little woman that you see here. They've been oh married for like God. over 70 years. And she, he was late, <laughs> you see, he was sending pictures um, of him and, <laughs> letters during all the war yeah they were so cute she was very nice that's mr murphy the friend of george um Fodovich. and you can see that we're near the, the the camper and she was so lovely you see they're wearing the taking the flag of the 82nd airborne division that's so beautiful my friend all american airborne all the way and um you see, he signed the camper and he's so, you see, he's going to check the spot, he see the spot of the 82nd Airborne Patch and he's going to sign next to other men from the same regiment um, that served during World War II. And that was such a moving evening. You see, it's, it's hard for him to to let us go. Yeah, I see that. Wow. Yeah. He must have found... And his wife was absolutely lovely, very supportive. She kind of stayed on the side while, while we were talking. And she was just happy that he would open up. And uh, I just know that the family told me that, you know, is is not really, is non predictant but he don't like to talk about those things. And um, I don't know, it's maybe easier for him to talk with me because he knows that I will not judge him. I will not see him again. So he can just open up and, you know, breathe after Right. That. But also and, you, um, you kind of know what I his know the unit is background. about, you know the history background, and he, f I guess, yeah. I guess people, the experience that I have with talking to veterans is that once they know, like have a slight idea of what you're talking about, when they know that, they are more easier to open up. Of course. No, you're right, because it's a different language, you have the military language, and first of all, I'm French, so you know, <laughs> I'm... Um, I'm learning every day new words, you know, I mm -hmm. don't speak like perfectly English, but if they know that I can actually understand and speak their language, the military language, it's good. And if I know where the outfit was, you know, when they first they performed their first combat jump, you know, for example, in Sicily, mm -hmm. and if I know a few towns where the 505 was and so heavy combat, they know that I did my research and by Doing that, you show respect to the veterans and the outfit. Because I see right. some stuff sometimes online where you see guys who want to do interviews, and it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all for doing that. It's great. But do a little bit of research. Right. If you know the guy is in this unit, just go. I'm sorry to say, but a strict minimum, go online, <laughs> Google the unit, and read a few lines. It can help for further question. Yeah. Exactly.